so hey what's up guys i am at here so today we have the hk9 ultra 2 which has received a new system upgrade so in this video i'm gonna be showing you how to update the smartphone and we will also see which new features are added with this system upgrade and i will also try to answer some of the questions which went unanswered in the full review before we start the video if you are new here a subscribe to the channel will be highly appreciated and you can also visit the channel to find many more new videos on the hk9 ultra 2 and the full review will also be linked in the description box below so now let's get right into it and update the hk9 ultra 2 to the newest version so to update the smartwatch you will have to open the wayfit pro application and then in the devices tab scroll all the way down and go to firmware update currently i'm running the version 1.09 and today i'm gonna be updating to version 1.10 so before we update let me quickly show you the animation speed and everything first of all here is the notification center we have the quick access page or the secondary screen we have quick access applications and from bottom to top we have the widgets page and you can scroll all the way down to open on the menu but you cannot scroll down to get back to the widgets page then here we have the control center and as i showed you before the screen of light is not using a pure black wallpaper after that let's take a quick look on the menu opening speed and here is the menu opening speed then here is the application opening and quitting speed and many of the applications have colored background like the phone application the data application has this annoying animation in the beginning you have colored background for timer stopwatch alarms and even calculator and if you go to settings and in any of these sections they also have colored backgrounds so now let's go ahead and download the update and start upgrading the smartphone So the smartwatch has now finished upgrading let's go to settings universal and about and here you can see that it has been upgraded to version 1.10 so guys i've spent enough time with the smartwatch and i've tried to read most of your questions on the hk9 ultra 2 unboxing video and i will try to answer most of them in this video so first of all let's talk about the fluidity so the smartwatch is looking good compared to the previous version the notification center was not so smooth in my opinion and the watch face switching is also quite smooth so i'm gonna check one thing that previously when we received a new notification it was a little sluggish while showing the new notification and here you can see that it is still a little sluggish and even the swipe gesture requires a little bit of work because when you swipe it actually opens the notification then if we talk about the supported emojis then it still does not support all of the emojis and only supports some of the smiley emojis only and it won't even show the emojis like heart emojis after that if we talk about the notification vibration I've tried wearing it and it vibrates for a very small period of time and the vibration intensity is quite weak but because of the notification sound you might get to know about the notifications now. After that we have the secondary screen and one of my followers requested that I hope in the next update they can add the option where you can arrange these applications but it is still not possible in this version then we have the widgets page widgets page is still looking quite smooth you can scroll all the way up to open the cellular menu but you still cannot scroll down to get back to the widgets page you still cannot use the crown key to access the widgets page to be honest i wish and hope that they will never add the option to access the widgets page using the crown key because it is quite annoying and i wouldn't even want to have that feature in the original apple watch and then from right to left we have the quick access applications if you talk about the control center one of my followers mentioned that if you swipe from left to right to go back to the home screen it opens the menu every time but it's not like that in my case i can normally use the swipe gesture to go back to the home screen and if you talk about the buttons then you cannot use the side key again to go back to the home screen you will have to use the crown key which is used for the back function the action key is also working fine but i wish that in the upcoming update that when you use the action key the application actually enters from right to left right now it is entering from left to right it will look better as the application is opening from the action key then one thing that i've noticed is that when you open the menu and come back to the home screen it will change the theme back to the default one and another annoying thing which is still not fixed in the hk9 ultra 2 is that if you're using this black theme then if you go in any application and then come back to the home screen first it glitches then it shows this theme then the menu opening speed is still not the fastest like the hk8 pro max generation 2 but it goes back quite quickly then if you open an application here as i mentioned in my hk9 pro plus review that if you go back slowly it will show the transition as you 
you can see here it is showing the fade transition it still needs to be optimized a lot but if you go back quickly it won't show the transition it will first show a black screen then it will show the menu and if you take a look at the apps the phone application still does not have the dial pad icon at the top like the watch os 10 that application still has this annoying animation in the beginning and does not show the transition when you are using the crown key animation is only shown when you use the swipe gesture the clock is still not live in the menu and it shows incorrect time after that all of the applications which have a colored background still haven't got the black background and it is looking really bad in my opinion i really wish they can add the black background again like the hk8 pro max generation 2 if you check out the world clock application it still shows incorrect time and sets your default time as Beijing or China time. Currently, it is 14.39 or 2.39 pm in Pakistan, but it is showing this time as China's time. Now let's talk about the display. So I'm gonna go to settings and then go to display and brightness. So one thing that I forgot to mention in the full review was that it also has the phone size option and if you find the text too small on the HK9 Ultra 2, you can also increase the text size. And after that, we have the screen of time option. One of my subscribers mentioned that it has got the option of always on for the watch face. But as I showed you on the screen of time, we still have the 30 seconds option. And then if you talk about the constant light setting or the always on mode, we still have only 20 minutes option. And the display cannot stay forever on the watch face. So one of my subscribers also mentioned that a YouTuber reported that there is a bug that the display stays on the watch face forever. So I have enabled the always on mode which can keep the display turned on for a maximum of 5 minutes. So I'm gonna go back and start the timer. And if the display stays on for more than 5 minutes then yeah the bug is there. So as far as I checked the bug is not there for me as you can see that after 5 minutes the display turned off normally so probably the bug is not there. Then let me go back to settings and display and brightness. So there is something new here for the AOD constant slide mode. So after enabling the screen of tile on the watch faces using the pointer clock if you use the screen of tile it will show the pointer screen of tile while if you use a watch face with the digital clock then it will show the digital screen of tile it is the first hk smartwatch which has got the digital clock for the screen of tile and still the screen of tile can stay on forever until the battery dies so now it's time to perform the darkness test on the screen of tile and let's see if they are using the pure black wallpaper now or not so first if you check the screen of tile with pointer clock so i'm really disappointed to tell you all that it is still not using a pure black wallpaper and still emits light when using the screen of tile. And after that, if you check out the screen of tile with digital clock, then it is using a pure black wallpaper and will let you take the true advantage of the AMOLED display. So it is really good to see that at least one of the screen of dial is using a pure black wallpaper. I really wish they can also update the wallpaper for the pointer screen of dial. And the smartphone does not have tap to wake option. A lot of my users report that there is a bug that it doesn't work. How can it be a bug if the feature is not there? None of the HK smartwatch had the double tap feature. So it's not a bug. It's just that this smartwatch does not have the tap to wake option and now it's time to talk about the bluetooth calling so first of all let me show you that in the address book i have my number saved here but as far as i've checked it still does not show the name of the caller and one thing that i really appreciate in the smartphone is that if you accept the call on your smartphone then it will use the smartphone for calling and you will hear the sound in the earpiece of your smartphone and the microphone of the smartphone will be used and to test if it switches the call automatically to the smartwatch or not i kept the call on for about four to five minutes and I didn't face this issue and the call continued on the smartphone. On the other hand, if you accept the call from the smartwatch, then it will use the smartwatch for the call. But still, if you decide to switch the call to the smartphone, you can use this button to transfer the call to the smartphone. And it is also working perfectly fine as you can see. Currently, it is using my iPhone. And if I tap here again, then it will use the smartwatch for the call. So, so far I've tried calling many times and for testing I didn't open the dialer application as well as the music application for some time but still when I received the call, the call was shown on the smartwatch. So since now it is using the same Bluetooth connection for Bluetooth calling as well as the watch application. So in my opinion you won't face the Bluetooth calling issue now and you will continue to receive calls on the smartwatch. And you might be worried that if Bluetooth calling is continuously connected then you might get the sound on the smartwatch whenever you play a media file. So for that I'm gonna go to files and if you go to music and swipe here then as long as you are using the watch music option 
it will not use the smartwatch to play any media sound and here you can see that currently it is playing the sound on my iphone but when you will select mobile music then it will start to use the smartwatch for the music even though you select the iphone as the output device still if you use any of the controllers here it will switch the sound from the smartphone to the smartwatch and as long as you switch back to watch music you won't be able to control the media playing on your smartphone and the sound will also not be transferred to the smartwatch after that if you go to the music library the imported songs are still shown as unknown music if you want to delete a song you can swipe from right to left and then tap on the delete icon some of the songs are working perfectly fine as you can see here but i'm still facing the issue that if you place some of the songs the smartwatch freezes and then you will have to press the action key and the side key simultaneously and wait for the smartwatch to restart So really hope this issue can be fixed in the coming update. So after that one of my subscriber requested to show the password function. So let's add a password in it. So you can add a 6 digit passcode in it. If you add an easy passcode it gives this prompt like Apple devices that this password is easy to guess and still used. So they are trying to see that this password is easy to guess. So do you still want to use it? So you can choose either of them. If you are using the always bright mode then it will add the password after the time ends. Or you can scroll down and add the options given here. With that I am going to tap on finish. And then you can lock the smartwatch from here. And once it is locked the smart island function will show that it is locked so using the action key side key and scrolling the crown key won't bring up the passcode screen which is a really good option in my opinion the passcode screen will only show up if you click the crown key or you make any touch on the display and as far as i've checked this screen doesn't go away unless you have pressed the crown key again and it even keeps showing when the screen of dial turns on which looks kind of weird so guys this was all from today's video so in this video i showed you how to update the hk9 ultra 2 and also which things are fixed and which features are added seems like we only got a new screen of tile but thankfully it is using a pure black wallpaper i really hope that in the next update they can fix the wallpaper of the pointer screen of tile also and with this video i also try to answer some of the questions which went unanswered in the full review you can also visit the channel to find many more new and amazing videos on the hk9 ultra 2 and you can find the full review link in the description box below and if you still haven't subscribed to the channel i would really appreciate if you can hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated on the upcoming videos if the video helps you out make sure to hit the thumbs up button and show your support in the comment section below i'll catch you in the next one until next time this is imat peace